Well, welcome back. You are listening and or watching Old Bull Young Bark Podcast. I'm David Mundy, and with me again is a man of many secret talents, not least of which is knowing every single word to Ice Ice Baby, Griffin Logue. Ice, How are you, mate? Great song. Great song. Glad, glad you brought that up. It's one of the all-timers, actually, so... How you going, mate? Good? Yeah, very good. I'm hopefully, I'm hope, really hopeful, I guess, to explore some of your hidden talents as we work our way through the podcast throughout the year. There's plenty there, mate. There's plenty there. Don't and, worry. Um, that was one of the ones that really intrigued me, particularly after the last couple of weeks. Yep. Some tunes in the in the rooms after wins. Post, post wins in the shower celebrations. Always way to uh, got a nice playlist there. I'm in charge of the uh, post game win tunes. So, I nice, nice baby makes an appearance on that for sure. With a few like really choice dance moves um, sprinkled in there, which is really great. Yeah. Uh, now, before we move on, let's reflect. Last week, Blake Akers came on. He was, he was our guest, the sheriff. How did sheriff, he go? It was good. He's a yeah, funny man. He's obviously had a pretty funny um, funny way into footy and, and a lot of pranks and, and whatnot, but uh, no, he's good. And I think we, we touched on before, obviously, uh, Blake and then earlier was Heath, uh, Heath, Heath, Heath of Chapman. So not the best history um, for goings on the podcast from both boys doing the hammies, but. Particularly after last year, we were spruiking the value of coming onto the podcast and that having a really positive effect on football performance. Yeah, this it's gone, year, it's gone downhill, not yeah. so great. So yeah. uh, I'm a little bit worried for our guest today. Um, I'm not sure what kind of injury might derail his uh, career at the moment, it but. It could be in a bit of strife. Yeah, yeah, I'm very worried. He should take it easy over the next yeah. few days in particular. Uh, now, we've had a great start to the year, obviously, on field. We've got a 10-3 and three record, which is nothing to be sneezed at. And we go into our bye uh, at a pretty good time. We're all pretty fit and healthy. Have, have you got any plans great, for this weekend? Great record. No, no, no. Just uh, chill out, mate. Get the get the mind right. Get my head right, boss. And uh, I'll just be chilling out, I reckon, yourself. Yeah, not too much. There's a uh, potential star attraction in the waffle this weekend with your great mate and Rumi. The big uh, fella, the big, big Matty Taverner might be making an appearance back in the waffle, but... Uh, See so how we go. Will you get down and watch him if he if he does get yeah, around? Yeah, definitely. As always, uh, I'm sure there's always a bit of a spectacle down there with with Tabs and the Waffle. So, speaking of spectacles, Tabs and the Waffle, the last time, one of the last times he pulled on the peel, uh, Guernsey was in 2016. Uh, and he, what happened in that game? Is that uh, Steel Blue Oval and a few of the uh, Swans locals up on the Canberra there? Had a few too many uh, beers and some were getting stuck into him and I'm pretty sure he flipped the bird to one of them and got <laughs> fifty dollar fine back then. So it's pretty uh, <coughs> worth it, I reckon. And how does that make you feel as a Swanee's boy? Disrespectful. You got to be careful up on that can on that can bar. It's uh, a few dangerous characters up there. So he's lucky he got away with it. To be honest, fifty bucks is should be thanking him. So thank you sprinkled himself. a few of your mates and family members into that can. Yeah, they would they would have been there. They would have been hosing him down for sure. <laughs> so in his head, it sounds like they got in his head and it worked. So yeah, beautiful. Um, well, I think it's about time we introduce yeah, our guest. Yeah. I'm, anyway, I'm really excited for this one. Enough of that. Go for it. All right. So um, definitely he'd be in the top three dockers sitting at this table for sure. So um, yeah, it's been hard to get him on. He's a busy man, a man of many talents, just like myself. But uh, anyway, the, the great fella, Shawnee Mack, mate, welcome. Stop, collaborate, and listen. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you stuck. He's on stuck the whole time. Oh, mate, I saw it's baby. I'm all That's over that. <laughs> Firstly, great to be on here, obviously. Um, um, playing with David. I know him very well. I didn't get to play with you, Griff, but um, as soon as you said there was a big invoice uh, that I could hit up the club with, uh, I'm here in a flash, mate. Just yeah. send it to Belly, mate. He'll sort you oh, out. Oh, of yeah. course he will. Absolutely. Send, send it to Belly for sure, mate. Uh, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you like the song as well, Ice Ice Baby. Not, not many people love it, but... Uh, Are you kidding? Mate, it's not... It's, it's it would not have been very, absolutely well in known. Sean's wheelhouse, I reckon. Oh, but. mate. Vanilla Ice. All He's time. everywhere. You know, he, after he got in the music industry, then he ended up flipping houses and having his own show in America where he just goes and renovates places. Go <laughs> <No. laughs> <No, no. laughs> on. No, no, oh, I know the song, not the man. Ice Ice Baby is a small, small <laughs> the um, house specialty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we launch in... Um, did you watch the game on the weekend? Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I was really, um, I was really getting nervous at half time because they kept, first of all, they started in the first quarter and I was saying to, oh, my brother-in-law was with me and I was saying to him, if we get off to a good start, we get three or more goals in this first quarter. This game is ice, mate. It is done. Um, because obviously the slow starts in the, um, last month or so and, uh, we kicked the you know, three goals in the first bit, but they didn't miss a shot. No. Yeah. And you know what it reminded me of, Dave, was the, um, prelim <laughs> final, which, we, I didn't play in. Two, 2014, uh, 15. Um, yep. We played Hawthorne at Subiaco yeah. Oval. Yep. 
Mate, and they were shelling. It was unbelievable. Mm. Jared Roughhead kicked this one from the boundary line on I remember, his. I remember that one. Yeah, do you yeah, remember that one? He was almost though, in the yeah. in, in, inside the sitting in the seat. He was that far. <laughs> it was such a bad angle, and he was being a left footer. There was no advantage from hooking it in, and he and he just put one right yeah. through. And um, you know that was another grand final he could have been in, my good friend. Mm, yep, thanks for bringing that up, mate. That still hurts, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I, I reckon you do get a bit worried sometimes when they hit, they hit those real hard ones and yeah. you look up on the board five zero go. Now they're going to start kicking some normal goals and then it's going to get worried. But now we, we got the chocolate. Well, here's the thing about that game. And also, you know, if you go back to, um, you know, previous loss was at home against Collingwood is there's a team that comes over to play you guys or our team that hope to win. And it's not until they stay in the game long enough mm. where it becomes a reality. And it happens mm. to us when we're going and traveling every yeah. other way as well. But there was a hope that Col- uh, Hawthorne would win. And when they started nailing those goals and there was a 5-0 next to it mm. uh, as the start, then they mm. start ma- – it becomes real for them. Yeah. And I reckon that happened with Collingwood. You could see after half time yeah. in that game because they had nailed a couple of goals in that third quarter and we'd missed a few. Then the gap of confidence grew. One team went further yeah. away. Get, they wanted to play. Up as well. And then we kind of dropped away and became a bit more hasty was the way we were going about it because we were trying to make things happen and they were just – having things happen. Mm. So um, anyway, that was my um, thoughts up until half time, and it was good to see we uh, kicked in. But again, you kind of, it's hard when you're now, you know, a supporter and everything and teeing off a new blokes like you wouldn't believe when you stuff <laughs> up. But secondly, giving um, respect to the opposition that they actually played really well. Because sometimes you just go, oh, we weren't at our best, but maybe we were pretty good, but they were, mm. they challenged us and, Definitely, yeah. and yep. away we went. I think Hawthorne certainly fall into that bracket. How have you, yeah. as a passionate Fremantle man and now supporter, as you mentioned. How have you evaluated the big fellas move up forward? Oh, it's a game changer. <laughs> Absolute game changer. Comes on against Melbourne. Who is going to stop Stephen May? Well, it's going to be him because Stephen May had to get off concussed. He yeah. didn't want to face you for he the next three quarters. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he wasn't happy. Yeah, he was. And then you go on to Lever, who's just a mad rebounder. Never wants to play anyone. That's how I like, the, I like to play in the forward line and or any other position. <laughs> and you took care of him. Just bringing the ball to ground, making it happen. It was amazing. Yeah, it was so amazing. That's what you can do, mate. Averaging... 100 points a game now ever since I've been up there. So I reckon, Joe, if you're listening, just going to have to keep it. Keep Are you it averaging 100 points a game? You just oh, make that up. No, I reckon we're just under. I reckon it's 95. Yeah. But. Oh, no, I thought you were thinking about your super coach team. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he knows that He's average. Yeah, the, yeah. Day, the, the day that's 100 points will be four. I won't be sitting at this table. So, something else will be happening. But. <laughs> so Goose moves up forward. hasn't resulted in too many goals yet, but has certainly resulted in some goal assists. There was a couple on the weekend. Oh, nearly Travi some, Collier, nearly, you nearly, killed him. Nearly butchered that one, yeah. Um, and Sonny Walters, you set up not only his 300th, but his 299 as well. 299, yeah, got him well on his way. So, yeah. Owes me, owes me a few for sure. Um, I reckon I get a bit, bit more joy out of setting them up than kicking them, to be honest. I haven't, I haven't kicked enough to really that judge That is an it, absolute but... lie. <laughs> but <laughs> you've missed a couple. But yeah. I tell you what, if you get them, you'll be like, as if I'm going to uh, handball to these, these short yeah, asses that's, getting that's, around that's the That's the difference joint. between bloody me and you blokes. I'm just a team man. <laughs> 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 I don't, I, Until you kick one, I don't, I don't yeah. care about. I don't care about me with like, 100 super coach score, whatever it is you're going on about, mate. I just want to give off, get the boys involved, and that, that's exciting. What, I, did you, what did you say to Travi after he ran into the pole? Finishing off your good work. Thank you, mate. No, so, <laughs> thank you, mate. I'm so sorry. Could have, yeah, could have been bad. I was happy. Happy he's a pretty flexible little fella. Yeah, well, how about you mark the ball in, in the first place in front of the big guy who yeah. uh, dropped it as you pushed him to the ground and yeah, stole probably, it out of his hands? Yeah, I probably should have done that as yeah, well. Step one, yeah. That's okay. Hey, hey it's footy, mate. Yeah. No, nah, you've, gr- you've been great in the forward line and, and there's only one other forward who's been able to change from defence, midfield, and then go forward. And that's the great man, David Mundy, because we know that he played in the forward line for a couple of years he when he was drafts, putting that one. Just kick snaggers and snaggers and play him out of full forward. Look out. Oh, my <laughs> God. Hangers. I've seen a few hangers, a few highlights of hangers. So I reckon you've got a few, more, a few up on me so far. Could, uh... yeah, I've only ever taken three, I reckon. Landed on my GPS unit twice and depressed Scotty Thornton's cheekbone once. And I thought, oh, that's enough. I'll stand <laughs> on the <laughs> ground now. <laughs> you take, you take any happy, Shorty? Uh, yeah, early days. I was really disappointed. After I had a few knee recons, um, um, I wasn't jumping as high as I once could, obviously. But then I reckon coaching has a lot to do with it. Because you, in your mind, you know, in your playing junior footy, you go up and um, you go for hangs or whatever the case is. And then they always say, stay down and <laughs> let the big guys do it or whatever the case is. And yeah. it stifled what I had in me. I had more yeah. to give. Yeah. Yeah. Just on reflection <laughs> of my career, I've had more to give. Vertically right? limited. I reckon that actually, <laughs> that strikes a chord with me. Or It's similar now because your whole time as a backman, you kind of think about not letting them launch and locking him down. You're not allowed to actually run freely at it. So I've just started to get a free jump at it now and I'm, 
I'm going to have to start taking some hangs, mate. You got to. You, you don't want to have any regrets, regrets do no, you? No, nah. and I, it takes me back to there was one year, um, I reckon it might have been 06 or 05, and anyway, Belly, um, he, he wasn't known for his aerial ability. But he he was marking the ball in the goal. you got to ask him about this. He was asking, marking the ball in the goal square. So JL, the big kahunas, you know, full forward at the time, wearing the number 20 with the long sleeves and the skinniest <laughs> arms you've ever seen. Glove, yeah, no no didn't he, yeah, Do you no have work. a glove as well? <laughs> yeah. I oh, rolled the glove out a couple of times. It's fair bit of look at me about long sleeves and a glove, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. so Justin's, you know, he goes up for this pack mark. For whatever reason, this happened for week in, week out. Belly would take a contested mark in the goal square. No joke. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> I don't know if he actually rode on anyone, but he had the freedom in his mind to actually have a crack and uh, and uh, um, and get it done. So um, um, I reflected again on that part and thought, well, why can't why couldn't the the Sean McManus with the undercut, you know, in the early days, um, being able to do the same? <laughs> Shawnee Mac show, yeah. Uh, and before we move on from the weekend's game, I loved the Shawnee Mac card that you pulled with walking in with Nat. Sliding in front of him with the Fox Woody camera in his Clever. face. Just a bit of camera time, mate. Yeah. Yeah. That was very good. It was, I was actually rocked up a bit late. I was, I was surprised he was there. I, <laughs> I thought I'd be on my own. I was five minutes late to our uh, normal arri expected arrival time. A bit of traffic, but yeah, walked in alongside the big fella and as soon as the cameras came, I kind of ducked off to the left and he wasn't happy with, uh, he said, oh, you left me out to drive there. <laughs> and uh, how did the big man take it? Going down the forward line and you saying that just up a bit higher and a bit to the left. Just tell him just to clear the fifty, pretty much. Once <laughs> I, once I was down there, just get it, get out of there, mate. So no, he was he was really good. I just told him, mate, where do you where do you want me? He's he's a pretty well established footy player, so he goes all right. Probably, he? he probably knows what he's doing, to be honest. Took a nice juke, just didn't kick the goal, but yeah, he did. It's good. Man. Oh, what about the celebration though? That was wicked. So he's celebrating, <laughs> everyone's up in his business. He's giving it to the crowd, and then one point. Yeah. yeah. The post. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder if there's I wonder if there's behind the goals footage of me on the bench as well because I I was on the bench having a drink for that, just giving the <laughs> <laughs> finger straight to the sky, and then yeah. looked up and gone. Oh God! <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> the crowd just went nuts. Yeah, they did. Me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so we'll take this moment now with Fremantle Royalty to re let's reflect on the Shawnee Mac career. Yes. Spanned uh, a, a good amount of Fremantle time, inaugural docker. Talk us through that um, process of becoming uh, a Fremantle listed player. Yeah, it was an interesting time because I was in 94 was when the team came in, about halfway during the year, and they had the whole show on Channel 7, right? And they... Um, they unleash the Fremantle Dockers and the uniform, and you're like, oh my god, it's some nasty colours all together. <laughs> First of all, you're like, whoa. And then um, for me, um, and say Belly as well, I think if we were eligible to go in the draft the, the year before, but we just we stayed around and we and we played waffle. So um, we were both playing league footy at at that time for East Fremantle. So it was kind of going to be a natural step because East Fremantle, uh, sorry. Fremantle had the opportunity to grab a certain amount of players from East Fremantle, South Fremantle, Claremont as part of this zone thing, uh, and then some other players from the other uh, Waffle teams as well. So it was kind of like a natural progression. People have said, asked me before, David, did mention to you off air before we started this, that people have read my name out and said I was drafted at 32, but they, I wasn't really drafted. It was kind of just you were told you were playing for Fremantle. Yep. In fact, there was a time where I was going to go and play, see if I could play for um, Carlton because Ken Judge was my coach at East Fremantle and that year, which started out to be our first year, which is 95, of course, we started in 94 at the end of pre-season training. But um, he went to Carlton and I had a, a great relationship with Ken and um, he put a lot of time into me, but he was trying to get me over to the Blues, but Fremantle would have to have traded me bef before – in the draft actually happened or I would have had to stay at a footy for um, a year. So was it like the, the next gen academy? Is that how? It, yeah, I guess similar, so. Similar, similar yeah, to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Um, so they just had a moratorium over a certain group of players. So I'd really, it was just me playing for Frio. And um, anyway, the first time, so we had our first meeting and it was at the Water Polo Club down in Melville because that was the home base, of yeah. course. And we, uh, it was a sat oh, Sunday morning, first time we ever got together. And I'd been out at this nightclub the night before Which and I got in a fight, Arcadia it was called, and I got in a <laughs> fight, knows, got yeah. in a fight on a dance floor because someone was picking on one of my mates. And um, anyway, I turned up with a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first thing. So Jared yeah, Neesham was the coach and he's looking at me because he's, um, my dad and Jared are first cousins and he's just going, oh, here we go, mate. This is going to be an absolute <laughs> drama. You know, Henry's son, this is uh, 
following in the same footsteps as his old man, but uh, that was my first day uh, turning up to a Dockers event. The long, curly, um, blonde do then as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know if I was going hard at the undercut at that stage, but certainly <laughs> in the next couple of years I bought it in. Yeah, I bought it in, Trent's obviously. Yeah. It was coming yeah, in hard. Yeah. I was ahead of the game. It? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, you know, I don't mind the long blonde. You should get you maybe you're due for an undercut, I reckon. I had an undercut growing up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the 90s, it was a big yeah, thing. Yeah. Who was he inspired by, though? I don't know. Wonder who. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Uh, and launched into career, Rising Star Nom in 95. Uh, and then a few hurdles with some new recos, which you brought up just before. Well, first of all, I was probably robbed in that. When you think back to it, mm. I, uh, I didn't really care for too much for it. I went over to, for the Rising Star thing, and I didn't. Um, uh, yeah, Phil Smart, who was our recruiting guy. So we went over there and we oh, stayed no, smart, uh, chucked in the hotel. And I remember Smarty, we go, oh, we'll go out for dinner and have a couple of beers. And this is after the, obviously, season finished. So um, I had not really stayed in too many hotels other than, you know, when we're traveling and you can't get into the minibar. So as soon as we got in there, I drank everything in the minibar, <laughs> like everything. And anything that I couldn't drink, I just took it to Smarty's room. <laughs> and Smarty was like, he was... um. <laughs> I remember he was ironing his shirt, getting ready. I was sculling these little bottles like this. <laughs> just just the boy from Willerton just making the most of it. Do. And uh, anyway, the next morning when we went to the, the Rising Star thing, we had to have a, a photo and stuff. I was absolutely broken. Like, I was in all sorts. And um, yeah, then I got asked to get up and speak, me, myself and Scott Camperiali, Camperiali. And, and um, then they said, oh, it's between one of you two. And I thought, oh, of course it is, you know. Um, <laughs> and then, runner up, Scott. Yeah. yeah. And then big Nick uh, Holland. Is it Holland? Um, uh, from, yeah, from Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He played 10 games that year and, was, and, and won it. So there wasn't, a, there wasn't a, a voting per game that you played. It was just kind of like they came together and whoever Who, the people on the East Coast reckon, and yeah. gave it. And I didn't really worry about really it then. got it after 10 games. Yeah, yeah. He was a good player. No doubt about it. Um, but That's Sean McManus. How many did you oh, play? Mate. How did you played play? State of Origin that year. How many played the State of Origin team. How many did you play in, the, in your first year? I don't know, actually. Um, most of them. Oh, no, I came in in round five. More I came in round five. So more than 10. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, 17, perhaps. Daylight robbery, though. Do you remember your Rising Star game? Um, I'd imagine it was against St Kilda, I'm guessing here. But um, which is funny. Yeah, so we played. That's I got in the State of Origin because I selected in the State of Origin team. Really on the back of this really good game I played, I think, against um, – yeah, it was St Kilda, right? So we're, we're flying over to um, Melbourne and we used to only go the day before. And I'm on the plane there and Jared Neesham was sitting in front of me and he just turns around and, you know, gets over the top of the seat and he goes, how you going? And I said, yeah, good, mate. And he goes, oh, it's going to be great tomorrow. And I went, yeah, yeah, you know, looking forward to it. And he, um, he said, no, but it's going to be great for you. And I went, oh, okay, what's that? And he goes, um, Quinton Leach has got a massive bad migraine. He's not going to be able to play tomorrow because his, his migraines last for days. And I was like, yeah, how's that good? And he goes, you're going to be playing on Nicky Winmar. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> right, yeah, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be best experience, blah, blah, blah. So you're going to be playing half back and, you know, just bounce off there. And our game style was back then, it was it was run and start. Yeah. It was so, so much fun. So anyway, it gets to the next – Next day, which is game day, and then I go into the we go into the meeting and speaking to Jared and and he was so positive about the the ga- the way you play footy. Obviously, up when you play and you defend, and then after that, it, you are off to the races. <laughs> so, um, first play of the game, I remember this so clearly. First play of the game, I think Steve O'Reilly might have been on Stuart Stuart Lowe or whatever. They won the clearance, goes out. Um, Stuart, uh, Steve might have taken the mark and then I'm just off and he ha- gets it out to me I'm having bounces because that's the way we played and then just in my mind just kick it out there as far as we can but yeah I played on Nicky that day and um, kicked a couple of snaggers and um, uh, ran off him all day long and just it was really great footy and, yeah, and yeah. really proper uh, you know when you play sometimes it's not always fun but it was always fun playing that kind of stuff so that, I reckon that would have been my first game um, oh, that was my main game that year. I had another one I played against Hawthorne, did really well out at Waverley too. What a place, Waverley. You missed out on that one, you guys. Oh, I played a half-time game. Out oh, Waverly. Dave. Yeah, Hawks versus Adelaide. So Unreal. I experienced it. It was the big uh, cow paddock that was Waverley yeah. in the middle of nowhere. So in in um, winter, it, you know, it's the coldest place on earth, Dave. Mm. You remember, sit, you sit in the stands there, mate. Honestly, the wind chill factor was uh, minus 10, <laughs> like it was full on. Yeah. But anyway, they had the shower head and that was the only place. So, you know, think about all the shower. The shower head covered your whole body. And oh. look at the size of my shoulders, Griff. 
I'm looking. I'm looking. Oh, this is the best thing ever. So, uh, and a couple of years ago, you were selected in Fremantle's uh, 25 since 95 team, and, and that, along with um, life member dinners and lunches, good yeah. way to reconnect and, and get back into the club. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. Yeah, I um, I certainly miss being. Um, I, I miss being down here to this day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was able to be down here for probably 19, nearly 20 years. And um, when you invest so much, as you guys know, you're doing it and have been doing it for a long, long time. But um, when you invest so much into something, you want to be there all the time. Uh, it's never like a job and stuff like that. So I've always wanted to make sure uh, I'm connected. And I feel like I'm always connected because you're still playing um, and we played a lot together. Obviously, Justin being the coach, mm. And, um, you know, Belly, who are those guys who I spend a fair bit of time with when I can in the off season, when they're not being, um, you know, got their serious footy heads on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And, and, you know, playing with Josh obviously, um, as well. So, uh, yeah, I feel like I've got a, a pretty good connection still with the club, although it is, it's hard being on the outside sometimes because you're so, just want to get into you it. feel it, mate, mm, you yeah. feel it, you know, when you guys are out there, I feel everything, you know, yeah. I, um. Mate, when you get a touch, when you get a touch, I'm, I'm there. Mm. I feel like it all the time. So, yeah, uh, and that will never leave. Yeah. Love been, the passion. Been on the receiving end of the passion once on a, on a radio call, I think, leading into one of the first derbies that we won last year and Shawnee just sprayed, sprayed me, just said, you know what, you boys are dishing up. Nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on the, I'm, on, I'm on the phone on the way to training, calling the, call the radio. What are you boys are dishing up? Not good enough. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you pull, pull your fingers out. Now, but you win a derby for once, and everyone's like, oh, sure, come on. Come on nah, I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, Griff, yeah, see you, mate. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you oh, go. Good deal, but, nah, you love that one. Love the passion. Nah, love it. Love, love, always loved it. Um, touched on the state of origin in your first year. How was that? Did you Would you bring that back, state of origin? Yeah, it would. It got to the point, the reason why it went away, because it started to become not, not as serious. So, yeah. for example, when I made that, when I got in that team, like I'm like, unbelievable. So the the names that you're around yeah. um, from WA's perspective, you're like, oh, man, how good. So training on Friday and we're playing on a Sunday. Mm. After training, I remember these blokes are going, oh, yeah, we're going to Northridge and we're going to have a couple of jars tonight. You want to come along? I'm like, isn't this... <laughs> are you serious? Like, we're playing. This is we're starting to yeah, this, this is a test or? Yeah. So, so at loss, um, I didn't go in and have a, a few jars. Just went to the local that night. Nah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, lo it lost a bit of full on, you know, passion to win. And yep. then it just petered out after a couple, uh, I think maybe another year. Might have, might have lasted another two years. But I reckon it should come back. How good is the news? I mean, everyone buys into New South Wales and Queensland, don't oh, they? Mm. I don't know. It's only yeah. two teams. It's massive, yeah. So I guess I guess the problem for the AFL would be because everyone, you know, Tassie and Queensland and all these and New um, Northern Territory, yeah. they'd want to get involved. Yeah. But it's the three WA, South Australia, and Victoria. Yeah. How do you then go about playing mm. playing each other during a year? Because everyone would want to go, won't they? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, which is probably hard, isn't it? Well, there's multiple concerns from like club level, level and those kind of things yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, but I remember injured. growing watching it as well and, and loving the passion and um, the almost high right or the um, homeland kind of vibe of it. It doesn't matter yeah. who, where who what club you barrack for or whatever you you support WA or Victoria in my case and yep. um, yeah, it didn't matter anything else for that weekend. So. No, it was full on. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah, touched on the uh, the worry of getting injured. And you obviously had a few injuries early in your career with the, with the two knees, mate. How'd you yeah. go about kind of? Obviously, building a lot of resilience from that. I've had a few myself injuries, but not anywhere near as something like a, a knee. So, if obviously, um, it's tough. It's tough when you're playing, but yeah. talk us through your years. When I think, uh, so that was my third year in uh, when I first did my knee and we're playing um, uh, West Coast, the West Coast Eagles. It was round three when I, oh, was it six? It was round three. And I was in for a big year. In my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, about time. I'll, I'll probably win the Brownlow this year. We'll, I'll lead the club to a premiership. And that's and that's how your mind works all the time. So you're like, oh, this is happening for Sean, no problem. And then um, anyway, we, and I hate, obviously hate the Eagles with a passion. So and one guy, I don't even know why I didn't like him at the time is Jason Ball. He, mm. You know, and Jason had a great successful career, particularly when he left over and went over to Sydney. Sydney yeah. And he's probably a really good bloke. Actually, I've had a few beers with him at Rotto. He's a good guy. So anyway, for whatever reason, I didn't like him at all. And in my mind, like every footballer takes a field, I'm as big as anyone out there. And when he got the ball in the like the back pocket for the Eagles and I saw in my eyes, I was like, oh, I didn't get this bloke. <laughs> and I just teared in and he shimmied one way and I shimmied the other and my knee just caved in. That was the first time I did my knee. And I didn't really know 
how bad it was because other than it just hurt and it got taken in. And um, it wasn't until Kenny Withers told me maybe about after half time because I came out and they thought them because I thought I dislocated my um, kneecap and then I was going to see if I can go back on. But um, um, yeah, after once Kenny had a proper look at it, uh, I, I was cooked. So I, I was really upsetting. Here's the worst part of it. So I'm sitting down after the game and I'm absolutely shattered. A knee knee reconstruction mm. on the way. Yeah. Whole right, career's 20, gone. 20, 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. twenty, maybe twenty one. Yeah. And then um, the uh, guys from Asada come in. <laughs> oh, your name number's been selected out of the out of the hat, and you're going to have to do. I'm like, are you joking? Like, I'm nearly in tears here, mate. And 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 not only that, where our change rooms were, you had to go the other side of the ground, yeah. and Ugh. um and go on the urinals in front of those guys over there. Like they wouldn't come. They wouldn't just go in here. We had to. I had to physically get me around to the other side of the room. <laughs> I wanted to clock this bloke. <laughs> like, I was so yeah, upset. No, so I had to do the the drug test and all the rest of it. I was fuming. But then um, um, the realisation of then doing your knee, had the operation, all that kind of stuff. And then I got really stuck into the gym then. I went really hard at the gym. And um, my good mate Anthony Jones was always injured at the time. And so we just spent uh, all the time in the gym. So just... Um, just going hard to see who could be the strongest, really, and hold the bench press record was always the the, the, <laughs> yes. the claim to fame. It's weird the bonds you make in rehab sometimes. I reckon mm. like some just uncanny kind of friendships that just can't come about from it. I remember getting real close to Lee Spurs. Mm. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't normally get close to you know Spurs. We know what he's like, but no, really, <laughs> really, really got close to him to this day. Still am close to him just from spending what six or seven weeks just in the kind of attitude room working together working hard so yeah he's a good fellow Lee good. well so that was my first knee recon and then the next year when I came back it was around six when I did it against Port Adelaide and we were playing away and um uh I, I, yeah so what so I was on the half I was coming across I don't I think I can play on the wing anyway I come across the other side and Chucky Norris my good mate had the ball on the wing I like and he was looking for a lead. For whatever the reason, the big fellas, none of the big fellas are leading. So I, I've chucked the hand up, lock on the key forward <laughs> and just started running this way. And then he's kicked it up and I've jumped into, um, I think it was a guy called Darren Mead and he was a ruckman for Port Adelaide. And, and, and as I've come down, my left knee, which is my bad one, hit the ground first and he just came down on top of me and then my knee just went. Yeah, before that though, two days before my, my missus, uh, who was my girl, my wife, who's now my, my, was my girlfriend at the time. She's like, Oh, I've got a bad feeling about you playing this weekend. I'm like, I don't need to hear yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to go and yeah. tell Jared Neesham that, Oh, sorry. Uh, my <laughs> girlfriend's got a bad <laughs> feeling about you playing this, <laughs> me playing this weekend. So I might just have to sit on the sidelines. Jeez. You don't want to hear that though. You just got to nah. keep that stuff to yourself sometimes. The, yeah. The yeah. jinxes, they work in a... Funny ways, don't they? But everyone after that, you know, um, devastated again and we're back at the hotel. We're staying at the um, the Hyatt in Adelaide there, Dave. And, um, uh, yeah, people like Chris Bond and Ashley Prescott and um, Brad Weir and Chuck and they just sat with me all night really and, um, you know, went to Macca's and did a Macca's run and, yeah. you know, consoled us, consoled me and I think we just stood up and I think um, Australia were playing um, South Africa in the cricket um, so it was on a late night game was over in South Africa yep. and they just sat with me and looked after me, mate. So I, um, I'll never forget though, you know, people in those times, cause you always remember that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and so your playing days with Fremantle ended in 2008, but yep. that wasn't the end of your time with Fremantle. You, you stuck, stuck around for a couple of years and helped out yeah. uh, Mark Harvey in his early days as our senior coach. What yeah. were your recollections of those times? Um, when I finished, I was going to be in the coaching and I thought, well, Previous coaches haven't been able to get it done, so I'll be able to get it done. Here he comes. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, um, so yeah, I spoke to Bondi, who was the GM at that stage. So he said he can, I'll start in the development area under under Steve Malaxis, who was our head of development. And then Mickey Pry was in there as well. And then I joined those two guys and, um, and uh, but could only work part-time until the end of the year. And then the following year become full-time because of the budget scenario. Yep. And, uh, yeah, in between – so I really enjoyed it, obviously. But in between that, I just got asked to fill in at um, uh, Nova. And uh, I did that for a couple of weeks and I thought, this has got knobs on it. I mean, they were paying me, but oh, I was like, oh, man, getting up at this time in the morning. <laughs> I'm not a morning dude like this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they um, – and anyway, long story short, I think it was October, they asked me if I wanted um, to work there with them. And, again, because – I had to wait months before I could possibly be full time at Frio. Then it was a it was a, a financial decision. Uh, otherwise, I would have been full time at Frio and probably never 
never moved mm. out of that space and, unless mm. you go and, you know, develop yourself at another club along the yeah. journey. So, yeah, it was interesting. And I loved it, Dave. Yeah, I mm. loved it. Yeah. Was able to get in the gym all the time with everyone. And um, I was saying to you before and Griff that halves would love me being in intra clubs. And so all pre, I'd do every preseason. I'd be there. I'd do every run, do everything. Did you know, all yeah. of it? Yeah. All of it, yeah. Get in the gyms with the young guys and just rip smash them apart. <laughs> smash them. What do you mean you can't do this? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody... No leg weights. <laughs> exactly. Has, yeah. no. <laughs> my legs? Yeah. Holy hell. So, yeah, loved every second of it, mate. And, uh, yeah, I often think about what, will, you know, how my time would have ended up if I had have just stayed my football path because, you know, I love this place. and uh, But that might have taken me somewhere else too. Mm. But, yeah, um, it's, it's interesting. And now, you know, I've been doing what I – do full time for a, a long time. Now, sorry to backtrack a, a Go little for bit, it. but in 1997, yes, Chris Grant was the uh, winner of the Brownlow Medal, but was uh, ineligible with yep. through suspension. So he won on 27 votes with an average of 1.27 votes per game. I think you mentioned it a little bit earlier, earlier but that year you came in, taking us to the finals, winning the Brownlow, uh, winning grand final, yep. all the rest of it. So in, ni- in 1997, you had the highest votes per game ratio, 1.67. <laughs> um, you only played three games that year, unfortunately. But overall, do you, do you have a feeling or an estimation of your overall Brownlow votes through your career? What they are or what they should have been? <laughs> Just both, yeah. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want what they should have been. Yeah. <laughs> No, I would think – What's 228 uh, what, times top three? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would think uh, maybe in the 40s, Dave. Oh, almost, 35. 30, well, 35 yeah, career so there you go. I was completely ripped off, Yeah, as Rocked. we know. As we know. If you follow my career, I was absolutely stitched all the time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so you talked about getting around the boys back in the, in the younger days, and you obviously had a few years crossing over with Barra. What were your first thoughts when uh, the big fella walked through the doors? Dave played his first games um, in, at Subiaco under um, uh, Peter German. Peter German, yeah. And uh, I, I know that when Dave was there, because we knew Germo as well, Germo used to fly off his handle. So I always wondered how Dave's just come over, a big, big country, uh, just come over here and, um, and and just thrown into this <laughs> <laughs> Peter German going off his nut yeah. during a game. But he was awesome. And, and because he was so skillful, he always, and still does, look like you're in slow motion. A lot of people were wondering, oh, geez, he doesn't move that quick. He, he does because I've chased him a lot of times. He moves quick. And um, he was always a great player because he was always playing half back and he would slice the opposition up. And I know how many times I was on the end of uh, a kick that no one else could make, but because he could see it. He could see it before it happened. Yeah, so yeah. Dave, Dave was always going to be um, the player that he is today. And... Uh, Mate, I'm, I'm, I want to, I'd, I'd say almost his biggest fan. Yeah, for sure. It's huge. Well, I appreciate those kinds of words, Sean. Absolutely. I, I really enjoyed playing with you, particularly those kind words coming after. One of my recollections of my first game, we played Melbourne in the MCG and had a really great win. But one of my recollections of, of that time was sitting upstairs outside Chris Connolly's office waiting for a meeting with Chris on a Wednesday or Thursday. So kind of knowing what was coming, going to play my first game and absolutely – Packing myself, like sweating bullets, nervous as, sweaty hands. Andy Brayshaw would have nothing on my sweaty, sweaty hands. Sweat, very sweaty hands. Really? Yeah, it's disgusting. Bring that up. Yeah. Uh, and as I was about to get up to go in, you've come storming out. So you and Aaron had been dropped that week, gone back and played for East Fro. We've gone on to have a, a really good win in, um, in Melbourne, come back and destroyed Collingwood the next week by 120 points. Uh, I'm thinking, how easy is this footy caper, this AFL footy caper? So a couple of really great wins. I think we beat you along the next week as well. But yeah. Yeah. I can remember you coming out of that office absolutely livid and filthy. So I'm glad that we can build a, a nice relationship and friendship after that. You know, start. Dave, you know, that's really, that's really funny because, right, so me and Spider got dropped and uh, we go back to Peel and, you know, to be honest, you're like, you're finding a way, how can we get into this, back into the lineup? So so we're, we're playing for Eastern Mandel, me and Spider. So Spider's, you know, He's flipping it all over his head. No, no Ruckman's getting near him. We're flogging Peel. He's flipping over his head. And, of course, he's only hitting it to me because yeah. we're, we're in it together. <laughs> you you hit it to me. I'll do the rest. And both of us get back in the team. So, anyway, get to the half. Uh, I think it was about three-quarter time. We've come out of the huddle. I, I'm on like 30-odd touches. Spider's had a million hit-outs, and every one of them is just like <laughs> straight to you. So he can't stuff that up, stuff up. Anyway, me and Spider walking back to the centre square, and we look up at the board. And we see that Fremantle give Melbourne a belting, yeah. and we're like, 
<laughs> oh, this, I mean, obviously you want your team to win, but we didn't. No, yeah, yeah, we yeah, want to get no, back no, in the team. Party, We're we've, like, we've, how we've can they be there. winning this game? There's no chance of us getting. That was really quite deflating. <laughs> <laughs> I think I end up coming off about halfway during that the fourth quarter with blisters because my feet were killing me, but. I just, I just knew that. Oh, well, what's the point, mate? <laughs> Monday in the team, they start winning. He wouldn't even. He wouldn't. He wouldn't know what it's like as well because the big fella's never been dropped. So I'm, I'm glad that's. No, he wouldn't that, know. Wouldn't know, mate. Him, knows knows the pain. What it, what it's like, but. Oh, take that, take that, Barra. Come yeah. close a few times, but uh, we'll move into my next section. We call it quick hands. I'll fire some quick questions at you. Mm. One of an immediate response, uh, and we'll move on. Um, did you have any pregame routines? Play music. I'm gone. Uh, I changed all the time, went from Metallica, then I went to a bit of Doof, vanilla, and then probably some ballads. Vanilla ice. <laughs> <laughs> coffee of choice? Don't drink coffee at all. Ooh. I'm a water guy, um, and I uh, always feel a bit strange when people uh, ask me if you want to go out for coffee, and I sit there with either green juice or a water. I look really <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Never? different. Never? No. Wow. No. Huge. First car? First car was a Ford panel van, four on the floor. Come on. Nice. Favorite movie? <laughs> Favorite movie? Um, I'm going to say Blades of Glory. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, That's fa- good, so appropriate. That's movie. Uh, go-to snack preference? Go-to snack preference. Um, uh, I just have a protein shake these days or a sneaky muffin. Those things that get me lately, a muffin. I'll get them for the kids' school lunch boxes, Dave. I'm not sure if you do the same, but then you're like... Nice. Uh, whose hair's better, yours? 1990s undercut long curly do mm. or Griff's? I shouldn't have to answer that question. Don't yeah, you? fair enough. Yeah, Moshi's emoji? <laughs> uh, I would think it'd be the Shuckers. Yeah, it's probably a choice. And how proud of you that the Fremantle Dockers uh, mascot is designed after you and Clive Waterhouse having a yeah. baby together. Yeah, I know. What an amazing thing. Um, out of 10, 12. <laughs> 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 Dead ringer. <isn't> it? <laughs> it's nice. Uh, spe- speaking of looks, you, you do have a... Ahead for radio, and you yeah. are the the, the uh, king of radio in Perth, mate. So that's um, it's been going. We're working with Nathan and that. I've had the privilege of coming on the show for a while now. So um, so what do you make of it, Griff? Because you know, I, I, th- I always wonder about. I was thinking about this the other day, and and you know how we um, you, you do TV interviews or radio, and in the footy landscape, you know what to say, right? You know yeah. how to answer every question, and when you come on to our show, there's barely a footy question. No, it's different. You it's know, good. I try to. I, I throw. I throw a couple at you, obviously. Throw, throw, but um, few, then there's some random stuff coming from Nathan, and I always so wonder, left field. Proper. Yeah. My first one was. Um, uh, <laughs> you, have you been you wash, washing your ass in the sink? Or <laughs> that's what he said? I'm going. What? <laughs> that was the, f- the first one I honestly remember. Going, what is this bike on about? <laughs> that's so, funny, has, but, yeah. so I always wonder. Um, yeah. How is it for you? Because it's easy to do the footy stuff, mm. but sometimes when when this random stuff's coming out, if, particularly from our our guys, um, I was like, "Jeez." Yeah, I've I've I loved it just because I found it hard first couple of times doing it over the phone. But when I came in the studio, and then it's just actually just banter, and like you'd see where the questions are coming from, even though a lot of them you can't see where they're coming from. But you found it, find it a lot more easy just to get along. And now I feel a lot more comfortable just talking about whatever. So yeah. Talking a lot of pump as well, so it's oh, big time. Makes 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 it very easy. But um, you obviously been in that for what thirteen years. You, yeah. you said now. So yeah. how how did you get into it? And did you always want to stay with doing that for a while? Or um, it, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I was mentioning before about I thought my destiny was here. Um, in in coaching, and um, you know, it was a necessity at the time because I had three kids at the time. And, uh, yeah, just paying the mortgage and stuff like that. And, of yeah. course, at Bondi was being a tight ass and wouldn't pay me full time. So. <laughs> Good on you, Chris. Bondi. Yeah, best, best and worst parts, obviously worst, have to be the mornings, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm rubbish in the morning. And because yeah. I, I don't drink coffee because I'm standing by that I'm, I'm tougher than everyone else. Uh, I'm standing by that and I struggle. <laughs> if you hear me reading the news. As the a coffee stop, like I would like to know why, why you don't. Don't drink yeah, the coffee. I, it, I honestly got to a point where, because I didn't like the taste of it to begin with. Does yeah. any, did anyone actually like the taste of coffee to begin Not with? Not at the start. No. Nah. Oh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, mate. A little bit. Nah. So, so then it became, in my mind, that I'm tougher than everyone. Which, then, which you are. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. And now, and, and be, you become very righteous about, oh, I don't need a coffee to start the day. And then <laughs> if you hear me in the morning or any part of the day, you know that no, I should be on coffee. Because yeah. I can't remember anything. <laughs> can't get a word out. 
Uh, so that's why I've kind of stayed out of it. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. So you mentioned the uh, <laughs> instead of the substitute for it is a green green juice and, and water and whatnot. So it yeah. obviously goes well on its way to maintaining your uh, ten out of ten rig. What else do you do, mate? Um, for those who aren't aware, it's the big fella is in, is in very good nick. Great I remember, nick. I remember <sighs> early yeah. last preseason, you came in and did a few sessions, and you're in the weights and sat on the. Just the bar for I don't know however long. Tabs reckons Peculiar. he did, did two hundred reps. And <laughs> so he literally sat there and watched him and said, "Mate, Sean, Sean he's in there again doing what's doing two hundred reps." <laughs> like he just couldn't, couldn't get his head around. He go, "What's this bike doing?" <laughs> he just done two hundred bicep curls. But you obviously you're a good good swimmer as well. Surfing. What else? What else you get up to? Uh, it's all injury prevention because I'm in pain all the time. Yeah. I'm no joke. I'm in pain. So you guys are in, oh, Dave, he is in all sorts when he finishes <laughs> playing because you got to, you just got to keep maintaining. But yeah, no, I'm just uh, surfing with my kids. Um, my, most, uh, two of my three boys are right into it. Yep. How many kids have got? Yeah, how many kids have got? Uh, so yeah, we get out and get amongst it all the time, getting into the water as much as possible. But yeah, so, so my, and then swimming has been with um, some of our uh, old, old alumni here at Frio. So Jason Norrish and, um, Peter Mann and and um, Jamie Marillo and and Spider Burton. So we've been swimming a lot and swimming over to Rottnest mm. and doing all those types of things. And that's been really cool. Actually, we went to Lake Argyle about a month ago that's and we right, swam yeah. this Lake Argyle, like fresh water thing. Yeah, yeah. And and it was only a few days after um, a lady got uh, attacked by a croc in in part of the course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, talk about sweat and bullets when yeah, you were really? about to get your first game. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty intense, though. You think, no, oh, I'm going to get rolled here for be, sure. Be a, sh- <laughs> be a shocking way to go, wouldn't it, Croc, I Oh, yeah, definitely. But anyway, so so um, that I was running before. Um, I was running before, but I haven't been able to run for a while. I'm trying to get back to that through Pilates. You guys do Pilates? Mm. Yep. Yeah, it keeps you strong. So yep. I know that the, through the core and, you know, the glutes and stuff, and that's where I, I need to stay strong. So, uh and, and apart from the fact that I'm doing all those sports and whatever, I train every day knowing that summer is just around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you nod your head saying you do Pilates? When was the last time you did Pilates? No, I, I have been this year. I've, I've had a couple of weeks off that, off the back of getting <laughs> my COVID and stuff, but I was into it. Charlotte, our Pilates instructor, actually commented a number of times about how good my form was. So yeah. You oh, just good form on there, the reformer, David. Yeah, look, yeah. <laughs> okay. Legend, legend all over. <laughs> yeah, right. Good on you. Where are you doing it at? Do it here or are you doing yeah, it Yeah, we have internal, do. yeah. Yeah, good one. Yeah, yeah it's good. Nice, very nice. Um, you mentioned sweat and bullets, and it just reminded me of uh, our good friend, Andy Brayshaw, who is known to have uh, clammy hands and, and sweaty. Um, you did run into him recently um, in the shops, I, I believe, and uh, he actually – Ended up giving us a call after and said, I don't know about this. I've met him a few times, obviously. Um, same, we're the same number. And uh, yeah, just, Sean, he just, he just did the old dine and dash pretty much. Like, what do you mean? You're having a meal with him, man? He goes, no, no, no. We are, yeah, we're at Palmyra Shopping Centre. And uh, Sean sat there chatting away and kind of bailed me up. And, and then he just, he just left. And he was self-serving all his, all his shopping and... Andy's looked at the screen. There's 140 bucks wait, waiting there to be to be paid, and Sean's just done the old dine and dash. Yeah. It, can you can you confirm or deny that this actually happened? It's absolutely true. I yeah. couldn't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to go into the shops to get some dunny paper and some toothpaste. That was my instructions from the missus. But yeah. when I was walking down the aisle, I was uh, and if, if first of all, when you go into um in Woolies in Pally, right? So then you go in there and with all great intentions. The toothpaste is probably in the second aisle and then at the far end corner would be where the dunny paper is. But as soon as you walk in, oh, it's kind of a upset, cu- yeah. couple of things. Oh, cu- oh crumpets Cup. are on special. Oh, how good. <laughs> what, I mean, and, then, and then I went past the meat set. Oh, I better get the dog some dog food or whatever. I was looking there and that was gone. And next towards it was um, like these ribs in a smoky barbecue <laughs> sauce. And they were like 30% off or something. like, oh, Give a couple of <laughs> come on with me yeah, straight, yeah. On, straight on straight there on my go. basket. <laughs> then I'm thinking around the place, and then I end up getting way too much. And um, so I'm so I get into this um, self uh, checkout stuff, and I'm scanning it, and you put the first bag down on the floor. I was only there for two things, as I said. Yeah. Put the first bag down, done next, second bag down, and then Andy comes and he taps me on the shoulder and uh, said good day and. I started talking, oh, mate, been playing so well, best number eight ever, all that kind of stuff, you know, pumping him up. <laughs> <Second bet. laughs> so, oh, yeah, no, Supes would be mad. Sorry, Supes. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, yeah, anyway, so talking to him and and actually I was talking to him and I mentioned about his dad because I did watch the highlights, uh, highlights. I watched his dad's last game, which was against us back in the day when I was playing. And um, anyway, I finished that and, and I, th- I finished that conversation because my phone was going off because I had to pick two kids up from Fremantle, different schools. 
And so I'm like, oh, yeah. So I grabbed the two bags here and another one under the arm and because I'm, you know, big rooster. Then I grabbed the <laughs> – <laughs> and then I got this massive thing of dog food. Shut up and tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just out the door, right? I'm in the car. I pick up the first dude, get to the next school, and I'm just sitting there on my phone. I'm just checking out the account, how much I spent because I was there for like $10 worth of stuff. And I'm thinking – Hasn't come up. Oh, must have used a different card. So I go on that one, look at that one. I'm like, oh, it didn't come. Oh, I haven't paid. I haven't paid. So I take, ditch the kids home, um, give the stuff to the Megan when I walk in the door. She's going, where are you going? I said, oh, I haven't paid it. Um, Woolies. She said, what? You stole? I went, no, I haven't paid. Like, it's not a big deal. They know who, and they know where I am. I like the, the footy, the, sorry, the, the, the manager there, I used to coach him in footy. It's, it'll be fine. So I roll back out there and I see the girl and, and I said, oh, sorry, I um, I left about 15 minutes ago and I forgot to pay. And she was like, what? And I said, oh, just that you was using that terminal there and I, and I forgot to pay. And uh, she goes, no, nah, it's not it's fine. And I went, what do you mean? And she goes, oh, your friend paid. I'm like, friend? <laughs> she said, guys, you're talking about your friend. He paid. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> this is the worst ever. <laughs> Poor Andy's been stuck with me. Think so. I'm at, anyway, so I met um, Willie. He's, he's, he's a, he's a tight ass as well. He would have hated it. Yeah, Woody would have hated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hated <laughs> it. Would have hands shaking as he Oh, man. <laughs> That's so good. So I get on the phone. I said, oh, by the way, I'm just going to go and get a, a thing of milk because I forgot that. I'm not going to steal it. But um, I'll just get, <laughs> anyway, I get on the phone. I ring JL. I'm like, oh, and thank God he answered. And I'm like, mate, he's going, how are you going, Shawnee? And I'm going, uh, yeah, great, mate. Uh, I can't talk to you. Uh, I'm ringing you for Andy Brayshaw's number. Why? And I said, oh, because I walked, he, he just paid for my groceries. And all that. he didn't stop laughing. He's like, yeah, that'll teach you. Yeah, young fella's got him. Yeah, 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 I said, all the best, you know, just give me his number. I've got to, I've got to ring him. So, um, yeah, rang him up, went to uh, quickly. There's no there's no ATMs these days. Mm. So I had to zing straight to Caltex just down the road there on Counting Highway, take, take out the money and over to his house and um, pay him. Because as we know, it could make him very upset without him having that money in his hand. Tight ass, mate. You left out the 25 minutes you were loitering, waiting for someone that you knew to come through <laughs> self-service. <laughs> Moose came through yeah. seconds later. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, so I think Annie was saying that Moose came through and was like, what's all the kerfuffle about? He goes, <laughs> shopping Max just done a runner. <laughs> He's left me with 147 bucks worth of shopping that I've got to pay for. He would have set it down to the centres so or 147 yeah. bucks, 24 cents. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. good on you, mate. Man, you were going back and, and paying him. I would have just said, cop that one, Shanae. You can... Yeah. Take that one, Andy, and pay yeah, for later. That's so. the price of wearing the number eight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, mate. So we've uh, we've mentioned a couple of absolute blasts from the past. Some of your ex teammates and, and Fremantle royalty. Another one I want to bring up is Troy Cook. Used to yeah. room with Troy all the time when he made his way back here. I uh, played underage with Troy first, yeah. and then when he made his way back from Sydney, used to room with him a lot. Any, yeah, he did. Anything in particular come out of those rooming trips? Um, I oh. Cr- Cookie is the most immaculate looking guy yeah. ever, right? He was always um, well prepared, well manicured, still is. If you're looking today, He's mate, amazing, fit as a yeah. fiddle, always in good nick. Um, no, I loved uh, rooming with Cookie because we we knew each other for so long. One thing that I found really funny, this is very this is very funny at the time, right? So we get off the bus and we're staying at um, in Albert Park at the joint, whatever it's called now. But anyway, we get off the park and there's all those autograph hunters there. And me and Cookie were rooming t- together, same age, you know, um, same everything, really. We get off the bus. This guy comes up to me. He goes, can you sign this for me? And I get it. And it was a Troy Cook card. <laughs> I'm like, mate, we do a lot of things together. Yeah, yeah. but There's a few differences. Yeah, there's yeah. a few differences there, mate. It was the funniest thing. <laughs> there, mate. Hey, big fella. <laughs> Cookie, big fella. But I love Cookie. He was a hard nut. Yeah, Woody. Yeah. God, he was great. He was a team player all the time. He hit in hard. He tackled hard. Um he, he's just great, mate. He's And he's great to have a beer with Cookie because yeah. he's always in a good mood. Yep. He's always yep. having fun. And um, him and Justin used to team up together a lot, I reckon, when we were having a few beers. Mm-hmm. Uh, in particular, I always remember them two in in uh, Thailand. We were on a footy trip and big big JL used to get to the bar pretty early, like, I don't know, at half past eight or something <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> and he would always drag Cookie in. And Cookie would do it because they were great friends and loved having a hit of golf together and stuff like that. And... Um, yeah, they'd just be giggling their heads off all day long, mate. Uh, yeah, so what a what a rip of the big fella. I love him. Cookie. And I, I still remember this day, this game we played against the Eagles once, Dave, and it might have been the Demolition Derby when we came back, but he ran into Mitchell White and the game was fundamentally turning and we were coming, but there was a ball between Mitchell White from the Eagles who was coming out of the back line and Cookie running the opposite way and Cookie cleaned him up. 
absolutely ran through him and then some, yeah. and then we got a goal out of it and, and really hurt the big fellow Mitchell White at the time. And, uh, uh, I don't know. He just must have been made of steel. Yeah, he was. He was a tough some, man. Some blokes just have those bodies though, when they're just, you, r- you run into them and they just hurt. And he's yeah. a great teammate. One of the stories that he tells us of rooming together with you was, I think as we've uh, discovered on this podcast in particular, love it, love a chat, Shawnee <laughs> Mac, and uh, rooming together, just having a general chat one afternoon. Uh, you make your way to the bathroom for whatever reason and you come back out in your t-shirt and that's it. <laughs> Continuing on the conversation <laughs> like nothing's happened and it's the most natural thing in the world. <laughs> and the way Cookie happy, tells happy it is what he's got, I reckon. <laughs> 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 Cookie's just staring at you like, oh, is he is he taking the piss? Is this actual ha- actually happening? <laughs> oh, <can I> say, <laughs> this is where this is this is where I reckon this nudity come from. Is that what you you get yeah. Luke So when I first um so the first second guy, so Anthony Jones and me roomed together first of all when we I was playing, but then he got injured a lot, as I was saying before, we we ended up teaming up a lot. But then so Ash Prescott, who's coaching Clem at the moment, Smooth got um traded to Frio, and then I started rooming with him before Cookie came. And so the first time I walk into my room and and Smooth's got there before me, he got nude straight away. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay, is this how we do it? I don't know. It's just, okay, we're just new watching TV. And he'd just be like, and he would be completely new. So then forever and a day I roomed with Smooth until Cookie came along and it was just, just, be, just that was what it did. And it was normal. It just became a normal thing. So, oh, the big fella, he must have been shocked from day one. I did room with him in London too. We had a uh, footy trip over there. That was really funny. It was so funny just to be out with him all the time. And um, one one night in particular, because we got back from this Sunday session and he goes, oh, I said, oh, mate, there's no water in the fridge here. Like we're, we're dying. And um, he's like, oh, I'll, I'll zip downstairs and just, just grab a couple of litres of water because there was like this um, Costco next next door. It was McDonald's, which is 24 hours here. <laughs> and it was a Costco di- and we had the hotel in the middle. So then Cookie's gone and he, he goes and, and and I'm talking, it's just downstairs yeah. and he should be back inside of five two minute minutes. Trip, two minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dr- I'm, dr- I'm that dry. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So then five minutes goes, now nah, 10, 15. I'm like, I'm in the, in, in the tap in the toilet just trying to get some water. So, <laughs> anyway. An hour goes. So I thought I better get. I, I just go downstairs. I don't. Know what, I don't know what happened to him. And I go down there, and there's no one in the streets of London at all. He, he, the, the big fella's just disappeared. Anyway, he comes back at about I don't know seven in the morning. What happened was he's gone downstairs when we're roomed together to get me and him, you know, a bottle of water. And and that was probably about eleven o'clock. And Andrew Seagert, I think uh, Matthew Carr, maybe Scotty Thornton, um, and um, and Jimmy. Uh, uh, seen, seen him and they're like uh, they were jump, jumped in the cab to go out and they're like Cookie what are you doing he's like oh I was getting a bottle of water for Mackie yeah, and um, oh, we're done we've had a big night all that kind of stuff he's yeah no no well, I can't hear mate come over here no, I can't hear so Cookie comes oh I was getting a bottle of water and they tackled him into the <laughs> tackled him into the taxi and just said to like go <laughs> and they took him out to the first guy and Cookie's like oh mate no nah, no nah, I'm not coming in oh, I was going back me and Mackie are done we're done and then they um, got him a drink. They made him stay. He said, "He said, right, that's it. Stay for twenty minutes. That's it." And then anyway, seven o'clock in the morning, yeah. he rolls back in. <laughs> I'm like, nearly died through dehydration. That must be a Ma- Matty Carr specialty. He, he abducted me in a, t- a taxi he? in Vegas one year. Yeah, when we went away. <laughs> oh, when thing. we were there. Yeah, yeah, that was same mid. thing. We all got home really late, and same thing. Oh, Barry, come here for a second. <laughs> away we go somewhere else. So. <laughs> that's great. It worked a treat. Oh, that was great fun, Vegas, Dave. It was great. Yeah, it was a great trip. Uh, I think I remember eating um, uh, like a kilo of uh, biltong or something yeah. standing there yeah. and it's like in the morning and I'm like, gosh, I should be in bed. <laughs> what, are we doing? Uh, what are we doing? This time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. Well, you clearly still have the passion, the purple passion. Always, are you, always. Are you going to be watching us against Carlton in uh, next weekend? Absolutely. My mum's going over for the game, actually. it's um, She's going over with a couple of the old chooks and um, they, uh, she's, you know, obviously gets there and, you know, supports as much as possible, but she's uh, looking for a weekend away from my dad. So um, that'll be uh, a great thing for her to go over and see. But yeah, I'll watch every second of the game and yeah. um, ride the pumps and the and the knocks and everything with you guys. And um, we'll never stop, you know, supporting and, and loving each and every one of you when you run out uh, for us, for us, for the people who aren't out there. So, um, 
yeah, I can't wait for the rest of the season. The only the only problem I have is that um, I have a holiday break from radio and it's the week before. So it's the prelim weekend and also then it goes to the grand final weekend. And I was actually going to nick off to um, Bali because I've got, um, like a lot of people in WA, I've still got flights from when everything yep. was cancelled. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, can I roll that? Dice? You know, can you roll the dice, mate? Oh, uh, back us in. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to have the to. Flights, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you know, looking forward to the uh, back after the year and see see what's going to happen and um, uh, for the club and and hopefully uh, for the latter weeks in September, which is going to be quite amazing and, and and not really amazing in the sense that um, this is a fairy tale because it's all hard work done by you guys. It doesn't just happen, and I re- and I realise that, and I know all the sacrifices it takes and. You're doing a bloody good job, and that's an understatement, definitely. Thank you. Thanks, mate. mate. We appreciate appreciate you coming in. The AFLW people here still talk about the chat you gave to them, uh, moving the chains before one of their games a couple of years ago now, and um, they talk about the lift that that gave you know those girls. I think they lost the game game after that day. Yeah, (laughs) you're building up too early, mate. (laughs) (laughs) They were cooked by the time they went out there. What do you want to do, Trent? (laughs) Jesus, out of a fever fit. <laughs> oh, no. well, thanks again, mate. And yeah, yeah obviously, you said we're doing a good job, but mate, you've done a great job coming on here. And uh, we thank you very much for the chat. We've got um little little parting gift couple shirts. They're out of hoodies, so we've actually, oh, we're actually sold out. So I'll have to get that to you later in the week. But um, as always, so what's they're, they're yours, mate? Two couple, couple shirts, empty bag. Yeah. Oh, fa- famous old bull young boy. So what's happened? So there is no hoodies. Hoodies are on their way. They're on their way. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck in, mate. COVID, Talk mate. Oh, mate, COVID, yeah. mate co- 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 COVID, mate. COVID shipping, mate. It's just hard. <laughs> it must, must get lost in. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys, thanks, mate. No, nah, thanks for coming, mate. We'll thanks really again. Yeah, it. really, really appreciate the chat. And you're, you're a funny man. Yeah.